precise origins of the term red pill rage are probably lost to the mists of time. Suffice to say, red pill rage refers to a process, an older process, I might argue, whereby the former romantic ideals of a man are crushed, destroyed, and reprocessed by reality upon learning certain basic truths concerning himself, womankind, and generally speaking, the world of romance. And in many ways, the red pill rage motif is not just accurate because it's alliterative, you know, red pill rage, but also because it really describes what we would conventionally associate with feelings of anger and frustration. Red pill rage is choleric. It is wrathful. It is a sense of frustration. And I wouldn't be the first person to draw the analogy, but I think red pill rage in many ways resembles this model that is often proposed in psychology called the five stages of grief. So the first stage being shock and denial, then pain and guilt, then anger and bargaining, then depression or sadness, and then finally acceptance. Now, some people argue about whether they're five or seven or even 12, but those are the basic five. And the reason why red pill rage occurs in men, historically, is because they lived a life of delusion through no fault of their own. It's not their fault. They lived a life of delusion. They lived a life of filtered beliefs, filtered talking points that they were fed throughout their lives. And then when they realized certain truths about themselves and women, they go through these five stages of grief, shock and denial, can't believe it. No, it's just not true. And you'll frequently encounter this in so-called blue pill men. No, 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 it's not like that. Then pain and guilt, a deep sense of sadness, and then the anger part, right? That's the choleric aspect of red pill rage. The man is angry, very angry. Then the depressive aspects, or perhaps a deep sadness, depending on how you view it. And then the acceptance. Typically, this is how it works, how it runs. It doesn't always work in accordance with this model. And some guys get stuck in certain stages for longer, and some guys actually never leave certain stages. It's not a perfect model by any means. But the reason why I want to bring this to your attention, even though it's a bit old hat, is that red pill rage increasingly seems to be a thing of the past. And by that, I mean not that doesn't occur anymore. But remember the very concept of red pill rage in the manosphere is very much based on a form of belief system that itself is based on extreme idealism. Idealism about the human condition, about oneself, about men, about women, about the nature of love and romance. And the reason why it can appropriately, in my humble opinion, be described as these five stages of grief is because it's a big deal when you spend most of your youth and your life even, in some cases, believing certain things, and those beliefs are crushed, destroyed, and dispersed into the wind. But I would argue that this type of red pill rage, this entire belief system in the ideals of love and romance and men and women, is somewhat antiquated. And why? It's typically something that affects mostly older men, or did, because most men are past it at this stage. People of older generations. No, the Zoomers, the Zoomers are quite different in this regard. The Zoomers rarely, if ever, experience red pill rage or go through stages of grief as accurate or as inaccurate as this model might be because the Zoomer, the typical Zoomer who's informed, who's aware, who is red-pilled, he never had a stage of idealism. Where would the stage have come from? He was born in the 21st century. By the time he became aware of these things, all these talking points had been made. He was quite literally, in many ways, born into the post-red-pill world. And 
the first pill he swallowed was not really the red pill, because the red pill implies a breakdown of idealism, of a false belief system. No, he already knows what's going on. He experiences the black pill. Now, I've made videos criticizing pills, but to work within the pill framework for the sake of discussion, many people argue that the black pill is the next stage of the red pill. Maybe. Because the black pill is not meant to disabuse you of some former belief system, system of ideals, system of romantic ideals. It assumes you already are aware of this. And it goes about describing your reality, and some might argue in the harshest, coldest terms possible, to relay the nature of reality back to the individual who is swallowing the black pill. And so if you wanted to talk about the equivalent of a black pill rage, which personally I don't believe exists, the title is a bit of an oxymoron, you see. You would have to call it something else. The black pill is muted. It's sedate. It's not full of anger and wrath. It's not choleric. Look at all the Doomer content, whether it's on YouTube or more broadly online. You don't see a lot of anger there. You see resignation. You see figures and characters resigned to their fate. And that makes sense, because the stages aren't there. You just swallow the black pill, and there you are. You have resignation. Now, for many people, the black pill is the final stage which is to say there's no getting out of it after a certain point in time. That's it. Some people are more flexible and maneuverable in this regard, and they're able to assess certain things within the context of the black pill world and extrapolate the little good they can. So if you want to describe the equivalent of a black pill rage, it is much more akin to a black pill malaise. Now, I've talked about the red pill malaise in the past, but the red pill malaise is that stage in between the red pill and the black pill. The black pill is always a malaise, but those who have the wherewithal to discern the nature of their own personal reality in as accurate a manner as possible can sometimes make use of the black pill towards positive ends. I say discern here because with the black pill, it is quite possible, entirely possible, to take inventory of your life situation and assess it strictly in negative terms. And that makes sense. I have frequently criticized the cult of positivity. I stand by my criticisms. But it is possible to only look at the ill in your life and never the good. Some cases exist where there just is very little good and plenty of ill. Sometimes you have cases where there's only ill and no good. But experientially speaking, I would say that having spoken to many black-pilled Zoomers, Doomers, and people of like mind, that they're often hyper-focused on the worst aspects of the black pill, which is to say, frequently, the black pill in the context of romance and women. That's how this whole incel phenomenon started. That's how it became an internet hit, as it were, although not in a positive sense, with entire communities. People demarcating their own lines of engagement by whether or not they belong to that particular community, that group, or not, based on profiles and looks and what have you. And lookism is real. Let's make no mistake about that. It's very real. But what often strikes me about the black pill malaise, as opposed to red pill rage, is that many of them not all of them, but many of them 
cannot see the forest for the trees. Which is to say, they have other skills. For example, I know a gentleman in the UK who probably has one of the best voices I've ever heard in my life. Top 10. And I'm well into my 40s. This guy's voice is absolutely fantastic. He could do something with that. All he would need to do is train a little bit, get some free software, make use of it. He could do something incredible with it. He could start a YouTube channel. He could get voice work. He probably could get voice work for animated stuff, in fact. That's how good his voice is. Without any practice, it just resonates. But he hyper-focuses on other things. Yes, he has social anxiety. Okay. Yes, he's probably not that attractive. Okay. All these things. Okay. Fair enough. These are real obstacles. But he completely ignores the fact that he has a truly amazing voice and he's very gifted in this regard. And less talented men have made more of less. And I've also known men who were not black-pilled by any stretch but had profound interests, interests in subjects and topics that were cognitively demanding, rigorous, and so interested it preoccupied their time. But this is a criticism I'd have to level at the Zoomer or the Doomer. Very often they have no interest outside of their abode online, outside of the things they do online. Now we all game, I game too, although much less than I used to. But, for example, they game and that's about it. When I say interest, I mean anything. They're not interested in wood carving. They're not interested in particular subject matters. It's just the black pill. And that's what I mean about the sedate, resigned, muted nature of the black pill malaise. It simply lacks any sense of exit. The red pill, at least in theory, promises you some way out at the end, some consilience with the circumstances. The black pill typically doesn't do that. The few people who do take inventory of their situation and try to work on the things they can work on. All the things contained within the black pill, the things that are regarded as axiomatic, they are absolutely real. Of that, there can be no doubt. Lookism is real. Heightism is real. Wealthism is real. But within that framework, There are other things that a discerning mind can find. Examples I've already cited, and there are many others. What is responsible for this? Ultimately, probably the Internet. The Zoomer lives online, and so he's never had the opportunity to, for example, engage in wood carving or learn how to plant tomatoes in the garden or take your pick of anything. They live and breathe online. And it fuels a vicious circle. And if I had any criticism of the black pill, it is that there should be a period within the quote-unquote black pill malaise where discernment becomes the most important aspect of the black pill. Not just that you are correctly assessing your lot in life, your height, your looks, your wealth potential, these are all limited by factors outside of your control. But then you are remiss if you don't look at the factors that are within your control, especially if you're young. This is the problem. The 19-year-old doomer sounds like a 70-year-old doomer. It sounds like he's run his life course. Again, I'm not for the cult of positivity. I don't think we need to be more positive than is necessary. Positive thoughts do not produce amazing results. It doesn't have an effect on the physics and nature of reality. That's bunk, the power of positive thinking. That's an illusion and a delusion. However, taking the correct assessment of the inventory that you call your life is important. And if you're only black-pilled, if you're only steeped in zoomer-doomerism, You're never going to do that, and you're going to miss the forest for the trees. 
It's one thing to be resigned in your 40s, your 50s, your 60s. It's another thing, depending on your circumstances, age 19, 20, to have completely given up. Because what I notice about these guys frequently is it's not something that you could call complete apathy. It's not as if life itself isn't enjoyable to them. They are striving for something bigger, greater than themselves. They want something else. They still have that desire. That flame is not yet extinguished in them. But through a combination of pernicious online existence and their own lack of discernment, they end up in a different stage, in a different place. So what I would say is, use the black pill, if you wish to call it that, as a tool, as any other tool. Do not allow it to dictate every aspect of your life. Because... It's all well and good to be black-pilled about your looks and your height and your wealth limitations. These are very real, and you should try to be accurate about that because if you're not, you might be disappointed. But if you have other things that you're overlooking in that process, which is very easy to do because the black pill only focuses on things like wealth, looks, and height, you will miss the forest for the trees. And in missing the forest for the trees, <clears throat> you might miss the few opportunities you do have in life. Everyone, thanks for tuning in. Please hit the subscribe button if you're not yet a subscriber. Please share the video, like the video. Hit that pesky bell icon because YouTube does not inform my subs of my videos. And if I'm still alive, I'll check you out later. May the gods watch over you. Take care. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.